I'm James, I'm a developer advocate for UVIS. Uh, my job is to spread the word about our recently released uh, UVIS API and also work closely with developers as they build their custom solutions out. So our API is built around information management, it gives you the flexibility to enhance an existing solution or to create your own custom solutions with endpoints that let you integrate, migrate, search and store structured and unstructured data such as contracts, design files, videos, chat conversations, and any file type your business uses. Our API is more than just another document repository like the S3 buckets or Dropboxes of the world. Uh, what sets us apart is that we take in a document or object, we also take in a strongly typed metadata file that's associated with that item. Uh, this metadata file gives the user the ability to perform different types of searches including uh, an in full text search within the list of the documents. So imagine you're working with a client and the client has a list of a hundred or more different invoices and you're looking for all the ones from company A. With this uh, search you're able to do the full search on it and find all the documents that say company A on them which is kind of cool. Um, so. I was actually going to ask the, the diversity of the room as far as developers go, but that was done earlier. <laughs> so we do know that we do have a good, uh, diverse group of developers here today, which is awesome. Myself, uh, I'm a JavaScript developer by trait, and to be honest, in my free time, I've been doing a lot of things with WordPress uh, as far as freelancing goes for front end projects and stuff, because that's what I've been able to find here in Austin uh, for free time. I also have a cute cat, her name is Poppy. Uh, that's my uh, contact information. So, as we just demonstrated, developers code in a variety of different languages. For that reason, when companies decide to build out an API, they usually make it possible for um, developers to reference that and use that API in various coding languages. So, my, uh, so when I first started with my company, I was using, uh, we were using a product called Swagger Hub. Uh, I think that was the Swagger 2 you were talking about. Uh, so, how's our API? And, um, if you're not sure, it's an integrated API development platform that brings together all the core capabilities of an open source Swagger framework along with additional advanced skills to build uh, document management and deploy your APIs. It, um, personally, I often got lost using this tool and felt like it was always having to search for our API in the sea of all the other ones that were there. Also, it felt a bit clunky to me and it felt like it would be hard to build a community around our API with this tool. Uh, so I was pleased to learn that after our first hackathon, we decided to move to the Microsoft Azure portal uh, platform. Uh, now I've used it in the past for hosting and my server needs, but I've never used it for hosting an API. So I did some investigating uh, into it and found that it's a popular tool for developers to use for hosting their APIs and it has some other cool features such as you can build a form inside of it, uh, and then there's also a way to handle tickets with it, I believe. And it looked pretty customizable too from what I've got to play around with it. Uh, so uh, my team, I was recently added to the um, Octopus team, which is our documentation team in my company. So I'm, uh, I come out to events to talk with developers and I also get to work with the documentation, which for me I think that's really cool because I get to make those connections uh, outside in the world and then I can actually answer questions for people which is good. Uh, so getting started out of the package um, Azure uh, portal came with um, JavaScript, Java, Python, curls, C Sharp, Ruby and I'm sure a couple other languages that were um, built out for coding examples to our API endpoints uh, but we quickly found out that most of our developers that were using our platform use the top three which were JavaScript, Python, and um, Java. So for that reason, we, uh, since we're a very freshly, just in July, released um, API, we decided to let's um, close it down to just the top three um, languages that were being used 
So we were able to take care of any bugs, fix issues, uh, any kind of surprises that came up. We figured let's take care of them on a smaller scale before we have all these other languages to deal with. So uh, my part of my talk was, is going to be on you know, getting started. What did I do when I had to start working on our documentation? Uh, and then the other part is what do you do when you don't know the languages? So um, as I mentioned previously, I'm a JavaScript developer by trait. And our API had examples um, currently set in JavaScript, Python, and Java. Uh, so the one thing that excited me at my job was the documentation. Uh, I subsequently got very close and personal with our API. Um, initially, I was really lost for the first couple months and just didn't really understand what was going on. And there was definitely a language barrier for, for me and my company. Um, but getting to test the examples out and make a lot of mistakes helped me out a lot. Uh, so getting started, I went with the trusty old postman, doing calls, checking things, seeing how they work. For me, I had to figure out um, first how to store something since, like I said previously, it, um, when we post something, it takes in that extra file with it. And that's called a multi-part um, post, post request. So um, that helped it to make, uh, so your, your items were sortable. Uh, so next I started my examples in JavaScript for which um, you know, should be the easiest one for me since that's what I code in primarily. Of course it was. Um, I was able to work through it rather efficiently. I did find some bugs here and there. Uh, I reported them as needed and um, I did run into a, a, a big issue for me was dealing with cores. Um, but I did figure out that we needed to run a node server um, so I was able to make calls on my local host. Um, found a few typos, nothing major. All right. So um, the different languages, the other two, which were Python and Java, I really didn't know how to use them. I've never touched them before. They kind of seemed foreign to me. I was kind of scared thinking about having to test something in a different language. So what did I do? Um, well, I, can, uh, I had a, a close personal uh, teacher friend of mine. He's, he's one of my mentors. He says, you know, the first thing you need to do is see what it is. What, how do you know how to use a language or use a tool? Or why do you want to use a language or a tool if you don't even know what it does? So I consulted Uncle Google. Um, I found out that Python is a jack of all trades, badass programming language. Um, it can be used for building both desktop and web apps. Uh, it also provides a functionality to take care of most common programming tasks. Well, I thought that was kind of cool. Um, so I start. I um, downloaded Python version uh, 3.7 and all the things that came with it. Um, I definitely watched a handful of lynda.com videos uh, to get the basics at least and learn kind of the syntax. Um, then I was lucky to find some in-person APIs, or I'm sorry, in-person meetups where I was able to learn some of the basics and get some, answer, some questions answered. So, so that definitely helped me out a lot too. So now I go armed uh, with some good on-the-job training skills and start testing. Um, I, got, I used the, the Python terminal and Python IDE for all my testing needs. Um, my team knew that I was never, I'd have never used this language before and were pretty supportive as well throughout my testing. Um, lastly, as most developers know in coding, you need to, do, to try and not give up. Um, you know, try and try again. Try not to ask for help. You know, you want to make sure you figure it out on your own. But, you know, eventually you, you do figure it out. You find out, you, you finally um, realize in, out of all the errors, you know, you need that little R in front of your, um, your request to, to pull a document from somewhere, which is kind of cool. Um, I learned that. Um, I'm moving on to the Java, I found that um, I, I also needed to find out what was Java. So I found out Java was um, developed to look and act like C++, but it's supposed to be simpler to use. Um, it enforces an uh, OOP model, and it can be used to create apps that run on single machines, mini servers, and over clients' networks. So my next challenge for me was testing the Java code examples. I will admit, this one seemed a lot harder for me to pick up. Um, and to be honest, I ended up having to get uh, one of my team members to give me a 30 minute crash course on what Java was and how it worked and you know the ins and outs. Uh, they helped me to download um, the Java, my, my Java environment and they helped me to set it up. Um, I learned something that was called a Maven and um, I learned how to use the IntelliJ um, environment for my testing needs. So um, that one was pretty clean cut though. Um, it was, I was pretty fortunate. There wasn't, there, they were, I guess it was 
it was tested well before I decided to, before I got um, handed the task of testing it. So um, it was just drop in my code examples, hit submit, it compiled and it worked great. Um, so what's next? Um, well, uh, everything worked out. I was able to do my testing with my, with the, with my documentation. Uh, everybody went home happy. Um, I will admit though that it was the best thing that helped me out the most was you know, asking for help. Um, you don't know everything. There's so many new things come out all the time. Uh, just asking your team. The worst thing they can tell you is no. So um, that, was the, that was definitely the one thing that I learned about um, just doing API testing for the first time because uh, before this I was not, I'm, I'm a front end developer. I've never done this really professionally before. So um, asking for help, it's, it's the best thing.